Hey listeners, welcome to Baggage Claim. I'm your host, Lauren Osborne, and you know what we do on this podcast. We explore some contents of our baggage, we pick something we want to check in, and a souvenir that we want to keep. On today's episode, I am joined by Nimade, that African butterfly, and we talk about the breakdown of baggage when you're having a mental breakdown and what that looks like. We also have a quick convo about some Bravo topics. We keep this episode super short and super sweet. As always, I really appreciate you guys listening. I am constantly looking for podcast guests. So if you want to talk about your own baggage or there's a topic you feel like you want to share with listeners, please DM me on my Instagram, check in your baggage, write me on my website, checkyourbags.com. Stay tuned for episodes talking about my trip to Denmark and just life. Happy 2024. Hey listeners, welcome to Baggage Claim. I'm your host, Lauren Osborne. And as you know, on this podcast, it's a place where each episode we talk about our baggage. We explore the contents of our luggage and we pick something to check in and a souvenir to bring with us. I'm here with a very special guest, fellow podcaster, creator, social media manager, writer, all the things, Yamade. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. Thank you for having <laughs> also me. Also known as that African butterfly. Or that African butterfly. That's me. Right. Hey, girl. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Yes. I'm very looking forward to Salt Lake City. <laughs> is that tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't normally watch them as they occur. So like I catch them later, but like I've been watching the last couple, but I still always forget like what night stuff is on. I feel like I've been doing the other ones delayed, but not, not this. Uh, for After that few. finale. Yeah. I mean, but I kind of want to, because you get the unedited, uh, the uncensored one on Peacock. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's what I need to see. Anyway. Anywho, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Stress, but blessed. Stress, but, uh, but blessed. Okay. Do you want a regular icebreaker question or do you want a so card? What's a, what's a so card? So it is so a collection of questions for deeper discussions. Ooh. <sighs> sure. Let's go deep. Okay. I'm just going to pick a random. Ooh. Okay. It's your final 24 hours on earth. You're in great shape and have limitless funds. Ooh, what yes. do you do? Well, Winston Duke and I are just joking. Actually, no. <laughs> uh, no, if I unlimited funds in great shape, it's my last 24 hours. Like I'm hanging with my family, especially like my younger siblings and my older siblings too. But like I'm with my family and we're doing fun stuff. We're being silly. We're having a good time. We're going out dancing at night, leaving like my mom home with the grandkids and me and the siblings are going out and we're like partying. It's a good time. Like, I'll miss all of my friends, but my siblings are also, like, my besties. So mm -hmm. that's what I'd want to do my last 24-hour with. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I, I feel like I'm at, like, a level of toxic that I'm just, like, wow. I feel like my last 24, I would be... Flying I would like to help my family and friends. Um, I feel like to a secure like location, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe recreate um like uh the party scene from like uh, Great Gatsby, but I'd yeah. I'd want to keep it intimate, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, it I said it. If I made it to ninety years old or a hundred. Or if it's my last 24 hours on earth, I'm probably going to party down and I'm probably going to try. 
I was going to say, there's going to be I would try, I would, recreational things. I'd probably try I would that go recreational. Future. Honestly, yeah. it's the last 24. Yeah. Give me my if own. If I know I'm out anyways. Yep. Right? I'm going out. But I want yeah. everyone there. They don't have yeah. to participate. <laughs> But honestly, I like that even better because I love a good house party. I do. I, mean? I love it so much better. And if I have all the money, it can be huge house. Right. It said limitless. Yes. All right. I take your idea too. I'm doing that. And then I have my <laughs> friends there. I'm just there. like, let's just do it, y'all. Guest like, house for the respectable people and everywhere else for us. Ratchety right. ratchet people. Right. Exactly. The last like, 24 hours. Exactly. Like rent out an estate. Like make sure there is at least like a beautiful deck or a way yes. to water. So there's yep. views. There's a kid area. I mean, honestly. I'm for it. it up. We've got 24 hours left and a lot yes. of time. So, okay. All right. Last one. And we're hot. So we're hooking up a lot with a lot of people. Exactly. I mean, it said, <laughs> yes. It said shape. you're in great shape. So that will be like literally partner. living it up, living it up. <laughs> They'd make a movie after. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what would detectives assume about you if they inspected your room without ever? meeting you that I'm obsessed with clothes that I'm messy because there's clothes and stuff everywhere just straight up everywhere Mm -hmm. um mostly that and I like the color pink if my room was finished if I'd ever finished decorating it they'd also get a sense that I'm like a sophisticated bohemian type (laughs) but I have not finished decorating it yet so it doesn't give those vibes yet (laughs) but it does give that I like pink I think for me, they would be like, gosh, if only she was neat, right? <laughs> like, I feel like my room is cute, <laughs> but it also like, it's tiny. And I have a bed that honestly, if we're going to be honest, the room should fit. It could be safe with a fool. I've got a queen and like a dresser that just takes up a lot of space. So there's not a yeah. lot of space in there, you yeah. know? Yeah. But I think they would find someone with a uh, a lot of clothes, half half drunken bottled waters. Even though I have a Stanley, right? Because it's also right by my bed. I don't know how I like pour them into it, but I don't want to pour all of it into. I don't know. It's weird, right? Yeah. Okay. So bottled water that are not completely empty, just surfaces are bad for me. But yeah, that's what they'd see. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, so what are we unpacking today? Well, I know what we're unpacking today. Do you want me to describe it? Yes, please. Hostess with the mostess. Okay, yes. Okay, on today's episode, we, okay, honestly, how we got here was we were discussing the viral video of someone really just going through it at the airport. and. Honestly, I know this word is overused, so I will say he gave a memorable, like, I don't want to say performance, but he kind of had a meltdown. And that's what we were talking about. Like, let's unpack meltdowns. They could be public or private, but I feel like everyone has had that moment. Maybe it was at like the airport. (laughs) Maybe it was somewhere else. But I do feel like they're, they are learning experience they're just experiences right you can make of them what you want but uh let's not normalize looking a mess but let's talk about it because I feel like everyone's had a Shelby and Dolly think about the girls moment Shelby and Dolly Shelby and Dolly (laughs) think about the girls oh love it loved it I believe I don't I think that was like what airport was that was it Charlotte I have no clue Mm, yeah who wants to go first you or me I'll go first I'll go first so what made me think about this um and I was telling Lauren is that like you know like she mentioned the airport moment like we see people have those meltdowns and I really have I think a little bit more tolerance for them than others just because I've had my meltdown moment where it was like something so little but because I was holding so much other stuff in it caused me to just full-on meltdown. Now, I always like to say, though, like, that doesn't excuse, like, 
bigotry, racism, all the isms and trees mm-hmm. and homophobias that you could, those slurs, no matter how bad life is, like that's not acceptable. Right. But your regular flipping out, meltdown, maybe cursing, whatever like that, I can be like, oh, maybe they're just having, maybe they're just going through it. Um, Cause I had one where I spilled my water and I started sobbing, like, so, like I'd never had something like so small and unconsequential, like cause such like a flood of emotions for me. And it was mm-hmm. wild because I was crying there for a while. And I, I was home at the time visiting my mom and she came in the room and I'm like, cry. I'm like, I spilled my water. Oh, she's like, okay, it's okay. We'll get you <laughs> some more water. I'm like, oh, but like, I just, I lost it. It felt good after, but like that moment. But I just was like, a so glad I had it at home, um, not in public somewhere. But I've also had times where I felt close to it in public, where like things were just going wrong, and I felt like, oh my gosh, one more thing happens, I'm gonna lose it. Um, so, <laughs> but usually in public, I hold it together. But at home, I just let it go. That was my my meltdown yeah. moment. Well, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've had a few. I feel like public spaces, I don't know. I don't think so. Actually, I went with like uh, my mom and her friend. And I think my brother-in-law who had passed away, his name was Ken. And we went to see A Star is Born. Mm -hmm. And I feel like. I was crying at the end of the movie because it was sad, but like it turned into like weeping, right? Mm, Like it was well over. I just felt like I was, I couldn't really stop crying for a while. I felt like that was one. And then another one was I had gotten into like a flash flood, right? Like raining, like pouring down Mm. rain. And the, I got off of the highway because it was dangerous. I couldn't see. And so I didn't just like pull over off the highway. I pulled off onto like an exit ramp. And honestly, I was in, I was with like a row of cars and the light changed. And what was crazy is all of us went forward, but we didn't realize that it was flooded. It, the light was reflecting Mm. the water Um. on like the ground. Yeah. And I did you all get stuck? It. Huh? Did you yeah, all get stuck? stuck. Yeah. And so we're like, tr- I'm trying to like pack myself because I had just come back from going to right to see my my mom and to it was just again a lot on the plate. And then this just happened to be like Mother Nature just being like, mm-hmm. you know, that's yeah, what it felt right. like. Yeah. So. Yeah. We had, I had to get out of the car. I had to like get my like duffel bag. I still remember this outfit like completely. I was like a yellow romper. I had to grab my dog, Stella. I was with my then, I feel like we were just a couple, right? But it's like my ex-husband and we have to get out of the car. We opened the doors of the car. This is also why I'm like SUV or bus. I can't do a sedan again. Mm -hmm. Water was like rising. Like it had already... Mm. It, was, it was oh my gosh terrifying but yeah anyway, we made it thank you to the most oh, high. Yeah. but we had to like run like soaking wet and we ran to like this gas station but it was closed right so but thankfully there was just like this overpass and there was just water flooding and this girl she was like hey do y'all want to sit in my car while um just to like warm up and we were like uh yeah thank you and we just like sat there and like she just played music and mm-hmm. waited till like our toe got there. But oh, that was nice. It was really nice, but my car was totaled. <laughs> but my freak out was like I freaked out because I was I took the exit. Like that was not I thought maybe that was like the safer route than pulling mm-hmm. over on the side of the road. Yeah. And so I freaked out at me. I freaked out at my ex husband. I just like lost it, like mm-hmm. screaming and crying at the same time. So thank God the girl didn't see that part, right? I don't yeah. know if she be, let us in the car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was my, that was my <laughs> understandable <laughs> freak out. Moment. Yeah. I feel like you're kind of allowed those. Just don't be a monster. Right. right? Like keep it in check. Like, 
you're still held accountable. It's like the time I was watching this clip of this lady at hotel. She was trying to check in mm-hmm. and she called the person the N word. And then, so he's like, well, you can't check in. And she's like, I'm sorry. I was it's just so upset. And he's like, it's above me now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like mm-hmm. you, like no matter how upset you are, those words don't come out of your mouth unless mm-hmm. they're part of your vocabulary. And we right. all can say things that we didn't mean to say when we are upset, but it's not things we don't think at some point. Um, right. I do hate when people say like, oh, you think what you're really feeling when you're angry, because I don't always think that that's true. I think when you're angry, you say what you've thought, but that doesn't mean that that's constantly your active thought, especially since most of the time people are just saying things to hurt or make the other person angry. Right. So they're like going for the jugular, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what they think and feel about you all the time. I just feel like if that's the route you go, you're not a person I want to know. Well, yeah. I mean, there's that part. There's that, you part. know, there's just that, right? Like, it's just like, Mm-mm. like Taylor and it, and and it shows and like low intellect, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And I like, hate the people who like tell all the secrets the minute they're mad at someone. Cause I'm like, Oh, I know I can't tell you anything because the minute right. you're upset, you will be telling everybody everything. But yeah, no, it's like, Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like with Taylor and Olivia, have you watched? Yeah. You've been watching Southern charm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see the reunion where she talked, where she told yeah. the secret? Like, that's yes. so okay, disgusting. let's do like a little premise, like, right? I can yeah. do a quick breakdown, kind of, sort of. These girls were supposed to be friends. I mean, and one betrayed, Taylor betrayed Olivia. And it happened. I'm not going to go into the details, but like, she's already apologized because at one point she knew that she was wrong for betraying Olivia. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the reunion. And Taylor tries to, I guess, embarrass or gotcha Olivia by revealing that she had a one night stand with a predator who was a family friend. And she tried to tell, like, reveal that to make Olivia look bad. And it was just so ugly. It's gross. But I mean, like, that goes to prove why Olivia doesn't want to be friends with her. I feel like people like that will show and prove their hand of why people don't want to deal with you. And then they're upset about it. It's like, well, because, well, A, those types of people are used to manipulating other people, right? right? Like they're used to batting their lashes and getting people to fawn over them like JT fawns over Taylor and uh. getting people to see like the surface of who they put up, not the actuality of who they are underneath it. But when you get to someone who sees the actuality of who they are and they don't like you, like that's a huge problem. And that's what we see with Taylor and Olivia because Olivia sees Taylor for who she is and Taylor can't stand it that she can't like schmooze Olivia over. But then she does shit like that, like what she did at the reunion. And it's like, that's exactly why she doesn't want to deal with you. All you do is continue to prove. Even like that night where she was like, so they were all on vacation and the news came out on like page six or whatever. And so they were talking about it and Olivia was upset again because she's like, I feel like you guys are lying to me. And so this keeps getting brought up. And so Taylor acted like she was so sorry, so upset about it, but then got in her room and was on the phone with somebody saying just bullshit nonsense, just trash talking nonsense. And Olivia could hear everything. And Olivia's like, exactly. I know that's what you actually think and feel. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm having a problem with this. And it's just like, Taylor just continues to prove why Olivia is making the right choice for herself. I agree. I mean, I loved it when she was like, effing, see you next Tuesday. No, but I mean, like, that's what she was being. Yeah. People are just so, I feel like master manipulators really have a hard problem with people who they can't manipulate as well. Like, Mm -hmm. um, I'm jumping reality stations here, but Love and Marriage Huntsville, Martell Mm -hmm. and Melody. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I tell you, I can't stand Martell. (laughs) Like even like with most reality stuff, there's people who I'm like, oh, I don't like him that much, but whatever. Like I can't stand Martel, and it's because he's such a liar, like a yeah. blatant liar. Like we'll be mm-hmm. caught lying and still lie, and liars like that are scary to me because scary. it's like all like because they'll say whatever they know they can say whatever, and all they need to do is plant that seed of doubt. And he does it repeatedly to Melody, and you never know if he's telling the truth or not. But we do know that he lies outright all the time He's and then he never apologizes whenever he apologizes it's like but i but and this is this other person's but it's why it's everyone else's fault or other people do it too he never can just apologize he's just oh that man irks me <laughs> so do you feel like he has meltdowns or breakdowns or is he having 
he's th- or is he on the flip throwing tantrums or like playing it up? He throws tantrums. He's not having like a meltdown. It's not like a one straw broke the back. It's that he feels very much so like he is a man and he should be respected and he should be above any type of like censor or anyone bothering him or anyone calling him into question. So the minute someone does, especially when it's a woman, he has a problem with it. So when it gets piled on in any way or done in any way that makes him look bad, he loses his shit. Like if Melody does or says anything, whether it's the truth or not, whether he's been lying or not, he will lose it. Um, and he has tantrums, not meltdown, not breakdowns or meltdowns. He has tantrums. True. Well, I would say, I guess, what is the thing that keeps you from actually going ape shit? I feel like it's Libra energy, right? Most of the time, I feel mm-hmm. like I can actually, con- you know, like contain that, right? Or not like misdirect it. Yeah. And I think sometimes... I guess for me, I find it surprising when maybe people can't, yeah. you know, that high elevating things to 10 is like a regular, I guess, occurrence or response. And for, mm-hmm. and then I feel like, I don't know, that could be too much for me. Yeah, no, it definitely is for me. Like I like keeping things pretty copacetic and calm you know in my life and like whatever I can do to keep my north star pointed at calm is what I'll do um even if that means like how I talk to myself so like Mm -hmm. if someone is driving like a maniac and I want to be annoyed but instead I tell myself it's a new driver or a senior citizen and that calms me down then that's what I got to do um and I feel like that's doing stuff like that is what helps me in public too, like, I, you know, like I was saying, like, if I see someone having like a meltdown, I tell myself that person's been going through a lot of stuff. And even though they're melting down over something stupid, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. And like, I don't live in a rose colored tinted world. Like I know some of those people are just being assholes and I know some people just can't drive. And <laughs> I know all, like, I am aware of the bad of it, but like focusing on the negative only takes away from my peace. And right. it only makes me upset. Like there are so many times, like, and this is where I really started it within the car is like there'd be so many times where something someone would do like a stupid maneuver and I'm angry and I'm like muttering to myself for like the next like 10 miles. That person has gone. They've It was a moment in the second in their life. They're living their life and I'm still holding on to being frustrated. So I'm, it's causing me peace. So for that, it's just like whatever I can tell myself within reason to keep my peace and keep me calm helps. So I think that because I naturally navigate through life that way, I'm already Mm -hmm. like a couple degrees lower in the calm level than most people. So Mm -hmm. like it really takes a lot to get. Yeah. Like it takes a lot. It takes a decent amount just to get an actual reaction out of me, but like an over the top reaction, like you really have to be doing wrong. Like really. And even then I'm more likely to cry first because Mm -hmm. I'm trying to win, like maintain like my anger. I'm more likely to start crying. Right. I do. I do switch to tears as well. But I will say that like, you know, driving, I feel like is like maybe a different thing, right? Like I feel as if I do, I feel like I do project on the road, right? Like I, I'm a person that I will be like, mother, I mean, (laughs) I, but here's the thing. I got this extra large rear view mirror, Mm -hmm. right? So I literally will catch myself and I'm like, honestly, you still need to like, look like you're singing in the car because yeah. you also, I live in Texas. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm safety first. People have guns like period. Yeah. the road rage you decide could be your life period. That part. So, yeah. So I try to make it to where I'm still, you know, I still look like I'm driving while also trying to tell myself that it is perhaps a new driver or the elderly. But if you're on some F thing, if you're on some, (laughs) on some bullshit, I'm going to, and sometimes I have to haunt. I mean, mean, sometimes you just, you got to get it out for me. It's more just like, I don't like hanging on to being upset because I'm the same way. Like, I like but to it's curse people in the out moment, too. right? Like once it's yeah. over, it's over, but I could be like, but see, if like, I were one of those going. people, if I were one of those people, it would be better. But I'm like, uh, we're like, 
you know, three exits down and I'm like, and another thing, <laughs> like, because it's the playing over and over in my mind. Like I have to put, like, if I don't push things out of my mind right away, I dwell on them for a while and like yeah. replay them over and over again. And like, reanalyze every it's exhausting and I hate it so Mm -hmm. I just try to keep it pushing keep it moving yeah I feel like I do that too much and so then it's like no girl you're disassociating you're not even catching anything (laughs) everything is moving forward you're not receiving it there might be some of that in the present I do I definitely do that and it's something you know I feel like if that's if that's something that I'm going to check in right I mean I don't know if we're there yet but I know what I'm checking in for for this checking in your disassociating what am yeah. I checking in? I'm checking in holding things in. I'm checking yeah. that in because I am all about just say it. Just get it out your chest. Don't yeah, let there be misunderstandings. That's one of the thing about growing up, like reading historical romances. And like right now I'm all into like the K-dramas. So many problems would be avoided if people would just like use their words and like ask questions or like figure stuff out instead they have like misunderstandings and I know it's needed for the plot of the show or movie but it happens to a lot of people in real life too just a lot of misunderstanding just ask the question who cares how it makes you look what would be a question that you would ask the lead person in what you're watching right now Oh, the lead. Okay. So, okay. So I'm watching Marry My Husband right now. Oh, it's so good. So good. Mm-hmm. It's about this woman who she um, got sick. She got cancer and she went home and found her husband cheating with her best friend and they got in a fight and he ends up killing her. And oh, wow. she wakes up 10 years in the past and she's basically like so 10 years ago they hadn't gotten married yet they're just dating she -hmm. remembers everything but for everyone else it's like first life right Mm -hmm. so she has a chance to like redo it all and she like you see these moments that she's had like how they went the first time around and you realize like her best friend is like like the bitch she is a bitch like forever has been ruining this girl's life forever for fun oh my god i can't stand that girl so, um, and then there's the super hot lead. I don't want to give it all the way, but there's a secret about him too. Um, mm-hmm. But it's really good. So if I could, t- if I could ask her anything, I would ask. Well, I have a general question for people who go back in the path, in the past, which is like, what stopped you from being more assertive in the present? Like, what was it that you found was so scary in the present that didn't let you say what you wanted to say or ask what you wanted to ask? But now that, because that's the thing, right? With these shows where people go back in time, it's what I love about them too, is like they go back and they start giving zero Fs. Like they're just Mm -hmm. like boldly living life because what's the worst that can happen? And I'm always like, why can't we live like that now? Like I try to sometimes. It's I mean, it's hard, but like, why do you need to come back to live like that? Like we should remember that because really some of like, we're always so scared, but like, what are we scared of? Like who's grounding us? The public opinion that we're scared of, like, how does that impact us? Like, what are we really scared of? Do what you want. Just do what you want. I feel that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Let's yeah. just snap with it. Let's see. Well, I feel like, is there anything else you want to chat about? I mean, I could keep going. I love this blonde on you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been wanting to go back blonde for a little while and then I keep avoiding it. Like, it looks so good. It's very high maintenance. Like, I feel like I have to be cute when I have the blonde. Like, it has to all be together. So it's high maintenance. I don't think you do, but you look great. Thank you. It's giving what Giselle Bryant wanted Mm. on Watch What Happens Live, but it didn't do it. It didn't get that. Can we just do like a tiny mini? I might cut this guy's like on a Potomac. Flop era. I'm so sad. I didn't even watch it. I'm done with it. I'm done it's with it. It's not great. It hasn't She's been not. Great. I'm so grateful for Karen. I'm so great. I'm a clip girl now because yeah. I'm not going to dedicate the time until there's It's just like it's hard changes. because they don't really like each other. Mm-hmm. And like some of them are like, well, Rob, half of them don't want to talk about what's going on with their stuff. Robin doesn't want to talk about Juan. Candace can't talk about the court thing. Wendy doesn't want to talk about her mom. Understandable, her mom's sick. But, like, then you have NECA in here trying to just stir up trouble over whatever. And, like, I don't know. It's just, it all feels very put on mm-hmm. and very, like, eh, not interesting. 
I feel like they need to. They need I mean, without up. Karen, it'd be over, mm. right? Like, I wish really Monique would. would come back. I wish Candace and Monique would make up and Monique would come back. I love Monique. I did Monique enjoy though. her, but I feel like her maybe her reality time there is done. I think she's over it, yeah. You know, and that's okay. But, I mean, I'm trying to think. They haven't had very many people, so we don't know yeah. who they, we could just, like, bring on, you yeah. know? But it needs to be someone that they like. And I feel like they can pretend like they don't have, they they don't hold grudges and they're open to things. And it's, you know, it's, of course, it's not them. They're laid back, whatever. But like reasonably shady, they are shady, right? Like stop pretending that things that like stop playing in my face when I'm watching this. Like you don't like Candace. You can you can't say, yeah. You can say you don't influence Robin, but y'all are literally now in cahoots to take her off the show. Call a thing a thing. I don't like it. And that's my Potomac rant. Boop, boop. I hear you. I hear you. How are you at Beverly Hills right now? I need to bring back Bull Back and Addicted to Bravo. I keep not doing it. Yes. I'm like, uh but then I want to talk Bravo. So I need to bring like, it back. Let's talk about it. This will be like a little segue. Segue um, into it, yes. I, I'm definitely enjoying Beverly Hills. I need to re-watch it because I only watched, I think like the second half of it. I feel like I missed the first 20 or I missed a section of it, but I just love how nice their trips are all the time. You know, like they just are same with married to medicine. I mean, like that's how you do it, but sorry, back to Beverly Hills. Um, I think it's been a good season. Um, Denise, MVP. I feel like Denise is the MVP of uh, bringing it with the fights with Erica. I've enjoyed them. Some good lines there. Uh, Sutton, I don't know what she's on, but I like it. Um, I mean, well, it. I mean, I don't know what Denise could have done. I don't, I don't know if she even said anything. Bless her heart. We've got to actually. I mean, we can give it to Denise, but it, it's really it is Erica that's doing that. that oh, it is. Yeah, I just it. like Denise's instigating of it. You need the reads, I feel no, like, but um, um, yeah, both. Both, yeah. I really have been enjoying it. I I, I do like name them. I do name like him. Sutton. I think I love that she is still standing I'm, up for herself. I love this slow. Uh, it's not even slow because we know what Crystal has in her, right? Like we've seen yeah. it. But like I just love her being like, "Don't play in my fucking face," because Anne Marie, right. Anna Marie. Yeah, Anna? a disappointment. She can go. All right, girly, this has been fun. Okay, listeners, where can they find you? Where can they find you? That African Butterfly on Instagram or www.thatafricanbutterfly.com. That shows you all my stuff. Okay, awesome. You guys can find me on Instagram, check in your baggage or my website, checkyourbags.com. Thanks so much. It's always for listening. And like I say, each episode, everyone has baggage. Looks different for everyone. The gag is you can choose what you carry. Hey, listeners, thank you so much for listening to this episode. And I would love your opinions and suggestions. Please put it all in the comments on my Instagram. Check in your baggage. That's my mention sign. I also wanted to throw in before this episode ends that on this day that it is being released, the genocide in Palestine and Gaza has been going on for 118 days. I am a Libra and an activist and a humanist. And you guys, if you haven't reached out to someone, called someone, protested, boycotted anything, we, the human race, really needs you to check in. I can't imagine. Can you imagine being carpet bombed for 118 days? Free Palestine till it's backwards. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 